Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Liam, the Prove It Guy, author of Limitation Is a Mirage. In this podcast, I will be sharing with you actionable tips, routines, and insights that I have gathered over 20 years of extensive study with masters, experts, and world class performers. My hope with this podcast is to save you time, money, and frustration, helping you fast track your way to mastery. Welcome to this episode of the Limitation is a Mirage podcast. Today, I wanted to chat about a few things that I've been doing this week that I'm excited about. And also, um, I put a post out and asked people if there are any questions or anything they'd like me to touch on within the podcast. And they asked me to touch on triggering, which I guess has come up because like in lockdown, everybody's triggered by everything. And there's like conspiracy theories and there's people hitting Trump and there's people hitting masks, which is but mental when you think about it. But um, people are being triggered by everything. So... Um, I'm just going to touch on all those subjects today. So first of all, I want to tell you about what I've done this week. So I'm working on launching my um, hybrid of mind and body work. So I said this the last day that I've been working for years. I work with the mind, I work with the body, but now I've, I feel I've got a good balance, a program that's a good balance to connect all of those things so that I can help people with all areas. So the body language, reading, the persuasion, the losing weight, the gain of muscle, the just feeling healthier and better. So my goal has always been to improve people, um, make people to understand who they are and what they are, what they want to be and how they get there. So that's where that program has come out of. Um, I had a big win this week. One of my um, online clients went from 66,000 steps in a month which is about 2,200 steps a day to 300,000 steps, which is 10,000 steps a day, which is almost a five times um, improvement in what they were doing, which they thought was going to be impossible. But what I try to teach people all the time, and I talk about it in the podcast, I talk pretty much everywhere that I do anything. Small steps will get you to wherever you want to go. If I wanted to make my way from here to Cork, Small steps would get me there. I could run it. I could jump on a car. I could get a bus. Can't get a train. We don't have a train from Oman to Cork. But even if I just went out and took small steps, I would get there eventually. People need to follow me and like feed me and stuff. But I would get there. So small steps will get you there. And also it was actual steps. So I found it humorous that we were talking about steps metaphorically and actually. Uh, So that's two of the things that's been going on this week that I'm really excited about. And... Um, If you have any questions about it, please reach out to me. If there's anything, again, like I keep saying, if there's anything you want me to talk about on the podcast, then reach out to me and let me know. So triggering, what is my take on triggering and why do I think people are triggered? Uh, Generally, I think people are triggered for um, two reasons. Probably none of these are backed by science and there'll be people that can come at me and tell me why I'm always up for learning. So the more I know, the more I can pass on. So my thinking is a lot of people react out of fear especially whenever they're triggered. So whenever I was asked about triggering, I I imagine the people that like go to the shop at the minute and say, I'm not wearing a mask. I don't need to wear a mask. This is against my civil liberties or my rights or whatever shit they come up with. Shouting at some poor person standing in the shop who doesn't really give a shit either if you wear the mask or not. They're just doing their job. Um, so people are reacting angrily to things they, that they don't have any control over. So... Like an easy one would be whenever I grew up in the martial arts world, people would say things like, what martial art do you do? And then I would say, uh, Tiger and Korean Shaolin system. And they would say, no, well, that's shite. I do Wing Chun. It's far better. We would kill anybody that does that. And I would try to explain to them that it's not about the martial art. It's about who's doing the martial art. So like driving is pretty safe. But if like you got a toddler and hook them up to a car and let them drive probably not very safe but then you wouldn't say that driving is unsafe you would say that the the person who was driving caused it to be unsafe so it depends on what's going on in the scenario and who's actually in charge of the situation so whenever people get triggered i think it's because they haven't dealt with whatever whatever's triggering triggering them there's something connected like externally to that or like it could be from their past from work they could just be having a bad day and this is just the final straw that just flips them but i think they just haven't worked through whatever issue that they're having that might have nothing to do with what's triggered them or it might be a belief system like growing up in northern ireland if you're you're a catholic or you're a protestant and you hate catholics or you hate protestants and then whenever we're in a night out and you're talking to someone and it's going really well and then they say 
what's your name? And you tell them your name's Liam O'Neill, for example. And then they're like, well, fuck, you're a Catholic. I don't want to be talking to you or seeing with you. And they move on. So that's just bred into them. They, they are reacting without logic. So I think people who react um, from a trigger, who get triggered, are, are reacting from just a, a feeling that they don't understand within their body. They they understand that Catholics are bad if you're Protestant, or Protestant is bad if you're Catholic, or, or whatever it is. Man United, Liverpool, Wing Chun, Karate, it doesn't really matter what it is. I notice I say karate weird because for years I've taken the hand out of Mark and call him a karate man. So I keep saying karate instead of just karate, like the karate kid. I call it the karate kid. Uh, Anyway, it doesn't matter what it is, whatever it is that that sets these people off. It's because they have an emotional reaction to a physical reaction that they do not understand. So whenever I was doing therapy work, like if I'm working with someone that had high anxiety or um, eating disorders, depression, PTSD, whatever it was, they had triggers based on certain events in their life that we eventually could work back to find out what it is. And then once we help them come to terms with those events and understand it articulately, move forward in that event, then that helped with their with their issue, whatever their issue was. But I think that people who are getting triggered by like masks, the lockdown fear, for example, that that's developed a lot of anxiety in people and they're they're just they have that pent up and then when someone comes along and says to them look you need to wear a mask or they just see a, a poster on a shop saying you should wear a mask that's just like the that's something that they can direct all that pent up energy and fear towards they can get angry and aggressive towards this thing because that's just something that they understand they understand masks they understand that's against what they were about to do so that's something they can aim at but really if you're able to sit them down if these people were logical and you could say to them why is this an issue for you why is this annoyed you what can we do about it once they started to delve into it a wee bit more they probably realized that they don't actually care about the mask at all it's whatever's been going on in their day whatever stress it is whatever just whatever's happening in general So if you are someone that gets triggered, one of the easiest ways to not be triggered is to avoid situations where you normally react emotionally. So where you react in such a way that you wouldn't like someone to react in that way to you. So if you're, if you find that you really hate like football, then going to a pub when a football match is on is probably not a great idea because it's going to trigger you. If you were in a bar fight and it's caused you to have some sort of PTSD, then going into an aggressive bar is probably not a great idea for you. So whenever you understand what it is that triggers you, you can then avoid those situations. That's the best advice that you can be given for for triggers initially is to avoid the situation that's going to cause you to react in in an adverse way for you. If you want to overcome the trigger, then you need to understand it. So I needed to understand why restaurants threw me into a panic, why the smell of spicy food made me panic. So I needed to break that down. What is it? And then eventually I got it to the sensation in my throat whenever the spicy food hit me. That's what was causing the panic. That was like the first thing that happened and then I would panic. So then I needed to work that out and I I went through my life and it it ended up just happening by fluke where my mom had said to me, this is how you used to feel whenever you were waiting to get your tonsils out. So that was my trigger was based on when I was younger. It was a... Like something I didn't understand, that my throat was sore, I didn't understand it, food made it sore. And then one day when I was in a restaurant, the chill chili hit my throat. Same feeling, my body went, we need to look back in the Rolodex to see what that's connected to. That's connected to all that pain and fear and you ended up in hospital, it was a fucking nightmare. Get out of here now, run. So because I didn't think about all that, it's not like I sat and thought this, then this, then this. It was my, my brain did it for me, went through everything like... 100 mile an hour. So I only got to feel the, the end bit, of, which was panic, fear, and like run. Was That's where I was. I wasn't at the backstage until I started to work that back. I think that comes from my years of meditating. I'm able to uh, logically walk back through things that, that have happened in my life. So you can be triggered by like anything. Even now, I was actually talking about this the other day. I remember being asked in school by a teacher if I was deaf or dumb. And for some reason, I still don't know to this day, even I've looked back on and meditated on it and everything. I don't know why, but I really took offense to that. And I like flipped the table and caused a scene. And my mum ended up getting called up to school. It was just a real complete handling. 
all because of them asking me something and, and again I don't know why it triggered me I had no no reason to be triggered the way I was but it's just what happened I was an angry person so whenever I was younger I was quite angry I didn't understand emotion I didn't understand logic I didn't understand how to deal with whatever was pent up in me so it could have just been I was having a really bad day and then just got to the point where they said something and I didn't want to be in school anyway so it just made me physically blow my top and like flip tables and throw chairs and just cause a complete scene I was a an angry child I didn't like school but I wasn't really bad I think I think I was just what do they call it miss um misjudged mislabeled unlabeled I was pretty awesome but just like quite angry at the same time um and now through years of meditation years of understanding how the body works reading research looking over everything it takes a lot to anger me. It takes a lot to get me to get annoyed or frustrated because I work very logically now. I look back and I go, right, I start. I, I can feel it. I can feel like the tension building if I'm having a stressful day and I go, right, let's stop. What is it that's causing you stress? I might be tired. I might be working on a project I don't understand. So if I'm tired, I'll just take a nap. If I'm working on a project I don't understand, then I'll contact somebody who I know will understand it, like... Um, Craig or Michal or, or Ian or someone that just knows more about it than, than I do rather than me just if I'm unaware of of the feeling then eventually it will just um, trigger me into an emotional response so your your emotional response comes from I think and I, and I could be wrong and you can tell me if I am but a lack of understanding of the situation that you're in so if you ever see a child who is trying to put a block inside one of them wee things you get where there's like a circle and a triangle and a, and a square. They're trying to put the square inside the circle and it doesn't, they can't compute that that doesn't match there. You need to move it over here. So they just start to like hammer it and try to hammer it in. And then they end up just throwing it away because it does. it's not going to work. And then over time they're able to work out that actually this one fits in here. So it's a bit of... Um, learning it's a bit of memory it's a bit, a bit of muscle memory because they're moving it around so there's a lot of things going on there that, that you're developing but that's exact example will happen if if you're angry because the restaurant like I, I worked in restaurants for years and people would kick off if they had to wait you'd be like you have to wait five minutes for the table and they'd get a bit annoyed and say that's fine and about five minutes later you come back and say look it's going to be another five minutes but you'll definitely get it then and they would kick off because this is just outrageous. And they'd have a whole scene because they didn't understand anything about working in a restaurant. They didn't understand how long it takes food to come out, how long it takes people to eat the food and all that sort of stuff. It's why when I worked in restaurants, I always felt the chefs should do one day on the floor so they understand what it's like to work with customers. So maybe you can't get up in time for the meal. So I worked with some angry chefs and I would come up to pick up the steak or whatever it is and they'd be shouting at me saying it's getting cold and I'd be like I'm dealing with 30 people downstairs like I'm sorry that I'm 30 seconds late getting this but their lack of understanding of what my job was meant that that just triggered them into an angry response their job was stressful the kitchen's awful because it's roasting like I did um, a couple of weeks chefing as well just so I would understand both areas and it's roasting and it's terrible but at least they don't have to deal with crying angry people so again, the person's kicking off in the restaurant because they don't understand why this is happening to them. Like pe people who get triggered a lot, things happen to them. It's not happening around them and they're involved. It's happening to them personally. It's like in a personal attack that I chose them to be the people that I make wait 10 minutes. So then they react because they can't. It's almost like they're not smart enough to deal with the the feelings and emotions that's going on in their head like whenever whenever you're angry I, you definitely can't disagree that if you you would not get angry and then go and sit an exam it wouldn't be a good idea you wouldn't be thinking properly you'd, you'd be um, stressed you would be defocused everything would just be a terrible idea it's never really a good idea to do anything angry and I, I've done martial arts for years and people will say to me yeah but you always see fighters and they're real angry when they go in. There's a difference between anger and aggression. It's good to be focusedly aggressive or to understand your body so you can trigger your aggression and, and drop it when you don't need it. 
being blind with rage is not a great idea to step into a cage or, or a ring or whatever it is. So I think the point I'm trying to get at is if you're being triggered by anything, then it means you have a lack of control in yourself emotionally, physically. You have a lack of understanding of yourself emotionally and physically. And you're being stupid. You're allowing something external to create your reality. So if you say to me, you're a baldy asshole and I kick off and go mental because how dare you say that? then that's just stupid because I am bald and a lot of people will say I am an asshole as well. So whenever I logically break that down, I go, well, that's just your opinion. That's I'm fine with that. That's why like, I remember a guy kicking off in the bar and the two bouncers restraining him and they couldn't get him out the door. And it was a real scene. And for some reason, he decided he disliked me and he told me he was going to kill me. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. Let's do this. I'll fight you outside. I told the door staff to let him go and I told him, I was like, right, go outside, I'm not cleaning this mess up, we'll fight outside and then we, we can just go back in and it'll be fine. And he walked out the door and I just closed the door behind him and walked back in. And one of the door staff was like, well, I thought you were going to fight him. And I was like, are you mental? He's huge, I'm not going to fight a big giant. Also, I'm at work. Also, I just don't want to fight anybody. And he was like, but you told him you were. And I was like, yeah, because he was angry, he wasn't thinking, he just needed a direction. You were aggressively telling him to get outside and I told him that he would get what he wanted if he went outside. So his stupidity overcame um, overcame him and he just did exactly what he was asked to do. He kicked the door for a wee while and shouted and roared and told me he was gonna, I was going to die. But I was working at about 3 o'clock in the morning so unless he was willing to wait outside to 3 in the morning I wasn't going to die. Plus there's a back door so I could have just went out at it. But the point is that his heightened state of anger and aggression clouded his judgment like if he had been a logical thinker or in control of the way he was thinking he would have thought this guy's definitely not going to fight me outside or when the door staff let him go he could have attacked me then i still don't know why he wanted to attack me i felt i was a decent enough barman i didn't do anything too terrible so again his, his the the point is that the the trigger was coming from his anger was just directed at someone probably because i was smaller than him actually now that i think about it but it was directed at something that he could take control of. He didn't know how he was feeling or why he was feeling the way he was feeling. But he knew that if he directed that at me, that he could hammer me and that would probably make him feel better. Little did he know that I'm a tank and I would have kicked his ass. But that's not the point. The point is that letting yourself, allowing yourself to be triggered is not a great way to live your life. If anyone has the control over you to make you feel like shit, to make you feel angry, even to make you feel super excited or happy... That still is a lack of control in your part. There is certain situations where it's nice to feel happy and excited by what other people do. That's fine. But it should still be under your control. You should still be the one who really elicits the feeling within you, whether it's joy, anger, happiness, sadness, whatever it is. And you should be more aware. So it's why I direct all my clients to meditating. The more you meditate, the more you understand who you are, how you feel and what you feel. So then you can take back your emotional state if you ever need to. Like if I'm going on stage, I can raise my state. If I'm doing a podcast, raise my state. Once the podcast's over, lower my state. I don't need to be psyched out editing this. Just makes no sense. If I'm going for a walk, I talk about this in the book. I don't go for a walk to relax or chill out. I, I do a wee bit of relaxing, like a wee quick meditation or I like have a wee mantra or something that I'll do to drop me down before I go for the walk so I can really enjoy just being out in nature or just going for that walk so if you are someone that gets triggered then start doing something about it like it's not a great thing to be someone that goes out and at any moment someone could say the wrong thing that makes you go mental um so meditate look into some other ways of just relaxing and then look into the things that trigger you what are they and why do they trigger you so that is me for today i, I hope this makes sense and i hope it answered the question that i was asked um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. If not, just keep watching them. I love getting any feedback at all. So thanks again for tuning in, and I will speak to you again soon. Mm -hmm.